Now you're going to learn about the shape tool. Um, notice or make a note that what you see on the page right here, that's actually just a screenshot or an image of the shape tool of the, my main toolbox. This is the real deal over here on the right. So to access the shape tool, what you do is you click on it on the main toolbox. Um, watch the right side of your screen when I do this. So you'll see an extra set of tools that will appear, and those are the shapes that you can create. And if you go way down to the bottom, you see a double down arrow. It's ever so small. If I click on that, it expands. Whoops, it's hard to get on. It expands the shape tool um, so that you have a whole set of other options. And um, so you have quite a few things to choose from. Now, what you need to know about color is that there is a small palette at the top right here and whatever you choose on that palette is going to be your fill color in your shape and whatever you choose from the palette on your main toolbox will be the border color. So I'm just going to go over to my next page real quick and I'm going to draw a shape and so I'm going to choose the circle and I want the circle to be have a yellow fill so I will click here and I want it to have a black border, so I click here. By the way, you can increase your border by um, dragging and dropping your little slider here or by hitting one of the preset widths for the border. So here's what I do. I, I click and hold my finger down and I'm going to drag. And the longer I keep my finger down and I do my dragging, the bigger my circle will be. I let go and I have a shape. All you can do with the shape tool is draw it. You cannot move it. If you're going to move it around the page, you go back to your select tool and you click on it. You can see your object tools and you move it around or you can resize it at this point as well. Or you can resize it this way and make it skinny. So you have a number of things you can do. But the only thing you do with the shape tool is actually draw it. So I'm going to go back to my shape tool. I'm going to go Click on the double down so I get more options. Come on, double down. It's hard to get in just the right spot. All right, let me see maybe. Let's try this one more time. So double down, there we go. And I'm gonna do this crazy shape. And this time I don't want a fill color. So I'm gonna choose this little icon here with the X. That means no fill color. And I want this thing to have a white border and I'm gonna make it rather thick. All right, so I'm going to click and drag, and you can see how I've drawn that object with no fill color. So what I want you to do is go to page 7, which is the one that I'm on in Active Inspire. You've been provided this flip chart, and you can click on the post-it note in the browser. You could also uh, click on the post-it note here, and there's a series of things that you can do to practice the shape tool. So you're going to pause the video, and you are going to um, go and practice for a little bit. Good luck. Welcome back. I hope you had success with the shape tool. Um, I, in the last assignment, asked you to create a content flip chart with two pages in it. And so I've um, done a sample and I have that flip chart open as well. So right now I'm on the training flip chart. I have another tab here. This is my cell part flip chart. So you've probably created a page that looks something like this with a, um, which is a title page. And then I think I asked you to create a page with some objectives, which looks like that. So now what I'd like you to do is do some sort of a, uh, related to the content and you can mix this up however you'd like, but something where you use a, the shape tool to um, maybe draw two boxes on the page and um, use those boxes for a sorting exercise. So what I could do with this particular content is um, I have the names of cell parts or organelles in the center of my page. And then I'm gonna be asking students to come to the board and drag the name of the cell part to the appropriate box based on whether or not it is a plant cell part, part part or whether it is both um, a part you could find in a plant in an animal cell. So you would notice that I have locked down um, the, the rectangles so they don't move. So the only movable parts, if a student came up here, 
with the and the select tool is the names of these uh, cells. So let me quickly, very quickly show you how I did that. I actually started, um, which is this is an efficiency technique for you with an existing um, page that I had because I didn't want to change the, you know, I wanted to do some of the formatting from this page. So if you do that in your page browser, you can click on this um, little icon in the upper right hand corner and I duplicated that page because there were some parts that I wanted. And the next, I don't want all this text, but I knew I would want te text that size. So watch this cool little trick. I can click on this um, box and I can double click on just to get inside of it, like which brings me kind of like I'm in the text tool. But if I double click again, I can highlight a word. Now, if you're on the select tool and you have text selected, watch what you can do. You can click and drag and it's like you've dragged out a whole nother text box. So now this is what I used then to create all those cell part names. Now I don't need this, so I select it, hit delete on my keyboard. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this very quickly to um, make my names of my cell parts. So for example, one of them is going to be the vacuoles. And um, you know, I want that centered in my cell box, I mean, my text box, so I'm going to do that. And now I know I'm going to want to make six more text boxes. So I can click on that text box, and there's a duplicate tool. It's this one right here. That is one of um, the object edit tools. So I'm going to do a bunch more of these. All right, so if I do a bunch of them, then what I can do is I can drag them off one by one, double click to get inside. I can delete that and I can write another one, uh, piece of text there. All right, drag another one off, double click on it, type right over it, and I can do uh, chloroplast. All right, so you, now in that case, you saw how it word wrapped because of the size of the text box. That means I just have to click here and I have to stretch my text box. All right, so now we're gonna pretend that I've um, got all my words because you don't need to see me do all of that. And to help me with the next part, I actually sometimes like to zoom out because then I can take some of these things, which are right now, they're kind of in my way, and I can move them. So if I click down below cell wall and I drag up and I touch all these text boxes, it's like selecting them all at once. So now I can click in the middle of it and move them all over. I just want them out of my way. So now I'm going to do my um, two boxes. So what I'm gonna do is go over here and I'm gonna click on my, um, my shape tool and I'm gonna click on a square and then I need an internal color. Now, if you don't like all the colors that you have available to you, here's a trick. You can hold down the control key and if you click on any of those pieces of the palette, you are going to get a whole nother option of more colors that you could change that to. So I could change it to this bright green color. And now if I click and drag, oops, now looky there. Um, I don't like the big border. So I'm just gonna go to my undo tool and I'm going to change my border size and I want a black border. All right, let's try this again. So I want something like that. So I don't even, I'm, I'm just eyeballing it because now I can click, use my select tool to kind of customize and get it just the right size that I want. So I want two boxes that are identical to this one. So instead of drawing it twice, I can be very fast and I click duplicate. That's one of my object tools and I'm going to move them over there. Now, here's another cool thing. These are boxes that I don't want to move. I'm gonna be moving the text boxes, but I don't want these shapes to move around. That's where you can lock these objects. And I could click on them one at a time and click on this pull down menu, which is one of my object tools, and I could lock them. But I like to be fast, so I'm gonna select them both at one time. I click here and I touch box number one. Now I touch box number two. That selects both of them at the same time, and I can lock them at the same time. So that's kind of a trick. Got lots of tricks up my sleeve. All right. So now I got my parts. I got my boxes. The last thing I want is my labels for these two boxes. So I 
could take one of my text boxes over here and duplicate it and then bring it down here. The only difference now is that this it needs to be a different color. So I'm going to double click on that word, get in there so I'm highlighting it, and I go up to my formatting menu and I'm going to choose white. So I've got a white. Now that doesn't look like enough contrast, but I could make my boxes darker if I wanted. So I'm going to go in there and I'm going to change this to say both. And then I'm going to click on it again, duplicate it, and double click on this and say plant only. And then all I have to do is take my um, text boxes and move them in there. But oh my goodness, look what happened. These text boxes are actually not on top of my rectangles. They're behind my rectangles. That is a conundrum there. So you know what? I've decided eh, these are all I don't want. I want I need to have text boxes that are going to be above these boxes. So what I do is click on the one and I'll just move it here so you can see how this works. But one of my object tools right here if you click on it, it, it's a bring to front tool. So I click on that a couple times and now that brings that text box in front of the other objects on the page. Now I can duplicate it and then change each of these pieces of text so that they're all different organelles. I hope you, that helps. Um, just a bunch of tricks there with the shape tool and the text tool.